Hello, how are you? I'm Chris of Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet, and today we're making shamrock dishcloth washcloths. These are seven inches wide, seven inches up and down, not counting the little chain loop tail. Follow me and I will show you how to make these adorable shamrock washcloth dishcloths with using an H hook and cotton dishcloth yarn. Let's get started. To make these adorable dishcloths, you need dishcloth yarn. It's very easy to come by. I'll be using a combination of two different brands, peaches and cream and sugar and cream. I will be making a dishcloth in a dark green and then putting a white ripple edge on it. Let me get started. I'll be using an H crochet hook. A stitch marker will benefit you in this project. Let's make a slip knot chain three and join in the ring. Chain one, it does not count as a stitch and single crochet into the ring. Chain three, single crochet in the ring. Chain three, single crochet in the ring again. One more time, chain three, single crochet in the ring. Now you have the beginning of a shamrock with uh, three little leaves right here. So we will join to the top of the first single crochet Ignore that little tail there. Let me get that out of the way. The next, now we're starting round two. Round two is slip stitch into the chain three space. Chain two, it does not count as a stitch. Chain, uh, these chain two, beginning chain twos and chain ones do not count as a stitch. So the next sequence is three double crochets in the chain three space. That's three. Now we need a half double crochet in this chain three space. I'm going to shove these over. Make room. Half double crochet. Now, this will be the dip on the shamrock leaf, this half double crochet. Next, three double crochets in this chain three space. And to finish and to finish off this row or this leaf rather we want to round this out so we will slip stitch in this single crochet we have our first little shamrock leaf the next leaf is the exact same we slip stitch into the chain three space chain two three double crochets a half double crochet and three double crochets and then slip stitch in the single crochet. I'll meet you at the end of round two and then we'll start round okay, two. Okay, I'm at the end of round two. I have three beginnings of three shamrock leaves. So next I need to slip stitch into this single crochet in the very first single crochet that was made and that is the end of round two. Now round three starts in this manner. Remember the chain two space? We will slip stitch into the chain two space, chain two, and two double crochets in this stitch. one double crochet in the next stitch and two double crochets in the next and remember that half double crochet that is where the first little dip or crook in the leaf is we will slip stitch into this stitch it's the half double crochet and this should be a tight slip stitch 
All right, looking like the beginning of a little shamrock leaf. So now we do the same thing as we did right. This sequence is repeated. We chain two. So two double crochets in the next stitch. One double crochet in the next. And two double crochets in the next stitch. And then to round this leaf edge out, we drop down and slip stitch into this single crochet. Get your hook down in there. And it's a tight slip stitch. There we go. So we have the beginning of a shamrock leaf. This will be the second shamrock leaf, and this will be the third shamrock leaf. Let me find my stitch marker. I'm going to put the stitch marker right here at the beginning so that I don't get lost. So let's go over this. Let me walk you through this again. So to start this, we would slip stitch into the chain two space, chain two, then two double crochets, a double crochet, and two double crochets, then a slip stitch in this half double crochet, chain two, two double crochets, a double crochet, and two double crochets, and a slip stitch down in this single crochet. Let me get to the end of the round and I will show you how to join and I will show you how to start round four. Okay, so I'm at the end of round three. I need to round this out by dropping down and slip stitching either in the slip stitch or in the single crochet. Let me get my loop pulled back up. I like to slip stitch down in that single crochet. That is the end of round three. Now we're moving on to round four. Round four is slip stitch into the chain two space chain one, half double crochet in the first stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochets in the next stitch, a double crochet, oh, I need to make my second crochet, a double crochet in the next stitch, and a half double crochet in this last stitch before the dip of the leaf. Now we will slip stitch in the first chain of that chain two. Now we will chain one and half double crochet in the first stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochets in the next, a double crochet in the next, and a half double crochet right here in this last stitch. Now we have made a little shamrock leaf with a little dip, really cute. But now we need to round this out so we will slip stitch into the chain one of that beginning chain two of the first of that next leaf. We slip stitch there. Then to start the next leaf, we slip stitch into the chain two space, chain one, half double crochet, double crochet, I always lose that stitch right there. And two double crochets. Okay, see how that is working out? So then we would continue on with a double crochet and a half double crochet, then slip stitch into the chain two space, chain one, half double crochet, double crochet, two double crochets, 
a double crochet and a half double crochet and we continue on around. So I will meet you at the end of round four and show you how to join and start round five. I am at the end of round four. The last thing I need to do is join with a slip stitch to this chain one. Now we're ready to move on to round five. Round five will be a series of slip stitches going up and then on this side there will be a series of slip stitches. These slip stitches will be you walking your yarn to where you need it to be. So make these loops generous. So the first thing to do in round five is a slip stitch in the next stitch and then it's a half double crochet no chains, a half double crochet, a double crochet, two double crochets, double crochet, and a half double crochet. Now, this is the dip. You need to slip stitch into this dip however your hook fits in there, that's a tight slip stitch. Now this next slip stitch is into the chain one, this chain one that is right here. That's a little bit of a tight chain one, there we go, it's in. All right, now we execute a half double crochet. Remember there are no beginning chains at this point. get in there well. Sometimes those first stitches can be a little fiddly. Double crochet in the next, two double crochets in this next, a double crochet, and a half double crochet. Okay, now you see there are is an extra stitch here, so we'll generously have, have a generous loop and slip stitch. We're, we're going down the side, we're walking our stitch. Then we slip stitch down into the dip, however is comfortable. I don't like that hole. I'm going to grab, I want to grab in some stitches. So I'm going to go into here. There we go. That's a slip stitch. Now that one can be tight. All right. So the next stitch is slip stitch into the chain one, slip stitch into the chain one, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. And we begin this sequence again. And this, this, this leaf looks like a heart now, doesn't it? So that's what will happen here. We will have a half double crochet. We slip stitched in the dip, then we slip stitched in the chain ones, then we slip stitched in that first stitch. Now it will be a half double crochet, double crochet, two double crochets, a double crochet, a half double crochet, then slip stitch into the dip, then slip stitch into the chain one, then a half double crochet, double crochet, two double crochets, double crochet, a half double crochet, then generously slip stitch into this stitch, slip stitch into the dip, and on around. I'll meet you at the end of round five. This was round five right here, you can see. I'll meet you at the end of round five. Going to put my marker here so I can keep track and then we'll start round six. I am at the end of round five. I need to slip stitch in this last stitch and slip stitch into the dip. All right, at the beginning of round six, I need to slip stitch into this first half double crochet, single crochet in this next stitch two double crochets in the next stitch. Now three double crochets in this next stitch. Two 
two double crochets in the next stitch and a single crochet in this last stitch right here and a slip stitch in the dip. However you want to make that, you can just slide it under one of those stitches. I don't mind going deep, kind of a tight stitch, not a loose stitch. All right, so single crochet in this half double crochet, two double crochets in this next stitch, three double crochets in this next stitch, two double crochets in this next stitch, and a single crochet in the next. Now we need to slip stitch into the next stitch. This is a generous slip stitch. And then slip stitch into the dip. There we go. Now look how nice that looks. Yep, it's looking so much like a shamrock. Now, um, let's go over this again. We slip stitched in the dip at the beginning, then we slip stitched into the first half double crochet, then we single crocheted in the next stitch, two double crochets, three double crochets, two double crochets, a single crochet, then a slip stitch in the dip, then a single crochet and a half double crochet, two double crochets, three double crochets, two double crochets, a single crochet, then a slip stitch in the next stitch, then slip stitch in the dip. So of course, what would be next would be a slip stitch in the first stitch, which is the half double crochet, then two double crochets, a uh, single crochet, two double crochets, three double crochets, two double crochets, a single crochet, then a slip stitch in the ditch, dip, a slip stitch in the dip, then a <laughs> single crochet here, two double crochets here, three double crochets here, two double crochets here, a single crochet here, and a slip stitch. And I will do that all the way around, and I will put my marker at the beginning and ending point I will continue on around and I'll meet you at the end of round six, show you how to drop the main color and pick up a contrasting color if you choose and how to execute that ripple stitch. I am at the end of round six. I still need to execute a slip stitch in this stitch and in the dip. Then we're going to go ahead and chain 25 and make the hanging loop before we pull up the contrasting color. There's my slip stitch into the dip. Let me remove my marker. Now I'm going to chain 25. Okay, I have chained 25. I'm coming back up and joining with a slip stitch right beside the chain loop right beside but I'm not going to join with the green I'm going to drop the main color pull up the contrasting color I'm just going to pull it up and it will be a loop and we're ready to work now with a contrasting color now let's go ahead and take a minute and just, we're not going to tie a knot, we're just going to do an overhand to kind of secure that. We'll secure that tighter later. All right, there we go. Now this, now this makes a little bit more sense. Now, how this stitch works, let me get my working yarn in hand here, get those others out of the way. How this ripple stitch works is very easy. It's a generous chain then slip stitch in the next st stitch. A generous chain, slip stitch in the next stitch, generous chain. Now I'm going to continue on around because when we get to the dips 
and the um, area between the leaves, we don't want this ripple portion. We don't want this big rippled portion. See how this ripples up? What we will want is just a slip stitch. So let me get there and show you how that looks. This ripple stitch is one of my favorite treatments. Um, it is similar to a crab stitch, but you're not going backwards. So, all right, so I'm starting to get down to the edge down in this crease. I'm not going to want the bulk of these chains down in there. So I'm just going to slip stitch here, but the color will continue. So I'll just slip stitch right here. Just make it nice and easy. There we go. Now I'll start chaining it again and slip stitching. Chain, slip stitch, chain. Let me show you how it looks as I get to the second leaf. Almost there. Now this will be the last stitch. I'm not going to chain right here. I'm just going to slip stitch. And a slip stitch. And another slip stitch. There we go. And then I will begin the ripple stitch all the way around. I want the ripple stitch around the um, the rounded part, but when it comes down into the crease, I just want a slip stitch. All right, let me go all the way around. This is going to be a pretty shamrock dishcloth when it's finished. Let me get to this edge because we will also need to take care of this right here. I'll be right back. So I am at the end. I have executed the ripple stitch all the way around the shamrock, and I need to finish and make this a clean white edge right here over top of the hanging loop. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to chain one, slip stitch right down here at the base of the chain, pull the chain loop out of the way, bring the yarn back in, grab the loop and bring it up and slip stitch. Now that will cover, that will cover this chain loop that is hanging down so you have a continuous white uh, line. And I'm going to slip stitch right here and end off. Oh my goodness, that turned out so cute. I'm so happy with these shamrock dishcloths. They're the size of my hand. They are perfect for using to wash the dishes or in the bath. Oh, I love these. Did you enjoy making a shamrock dishcloth with a little hangy loop? I hope you did. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it was fun for you and I hope it will bring joy and fun into your kitchen or your bath. Well, it was really good to have you on my side of the mountain. I hope you'll like and subscribe and come again soon. Bye.